So now what you should be looking at uh, is my ECG flow interpretation diagram. So what I'm going to do now is, is annotate the process of it and, and how I created it and just what I use it for. So I made this uh, probably about halfway through the semester. It's, it's a quite basic flow diagram in the sense that it doesn't have all of the rhythms that we've covered. I didn't want it to get ridiculously large and, and complicated. But you can see it's got a good amount of rhythms on there and it, it starts off in the middle with a basic just giving a rhythm. Uh, and I, I, I found that using whether it was regular or not <clears throat> rather than rate or any other differentiating characteristic, I found that using regular was a good first question to help break up the two pools I wanted to have. So if you just follow this along um, while I talk about it, so obviously like I said it starts off with the rhythm so the first question being is it regular so if it's not a regular rhythm then I wanted to break it up is is it because of a single beat or is it continually not regular so that means was it one or two or three you know was it just a couple of beats that makes it not regular in a certain section or is it continually a un or an a with no order is it chaotic um, is it irregular so uh, you can so we'll, we'll go for no so um, so no it's not a single beat causing it to be irregular and then we move on to is there an identifiable QRS complex so it's not regular it's not because of a single beat so it's repeating but there's no identifiable QRS complex and so well that leads to ventricular fibrillation and as you can see with every one I've, I've color coded it as well as giving it a small sample of the ECG of what it looks like to help visually represent that and of course this was all created myself and uh, it took a long time it might not look like it to create but uh, this was just an approach that really helped me understand ECG interpretation so you can see their ventricular fibrillation it's all over the place is chaotic so we got the through a logical path with very analytical questions and you can see where we end up so if we go back one step and it's irregular due to a number of beats but there is an identifiable QRS complex then in this case it might be atrial fibrillation you can see there is a QRX but it's not regular there is God knows rhythm in that atrial in that atrium um, ordered rhythm and you can be the coarse and the fine fibrillation just like in ventricular fibrillation so the other two kind of fibrillations I wanted to include so if we go all the way back uh, is it regular? No but is it regular due to a single beat? Yes so this is where we get into our single beats and and analyzing and characterizing what single beat it was due to so then we get into the question was it early or late so we'll say it was late to start off with so it's a late single beat and is the QRX complex thin so is it normal is it regular looking is it less than 0 0.12 if it's late and it's is thin the QRS looks normal then it can only be a junctional escape beat so it can't be ventricular because if you go back one step and look at the ventricular escape beat the the QRS complex is quite fat and wide so that's how we differentiate so it's obviously already been determined to be late and then we can break those two up into whether the QRS complex is normal or whether it's not so then if we go back again and go back to was it early or late if we say it was early we can move on to is there any indication of atrial contraction so is there a P wave is there any form of movement that would indicate the atrium is contracting if there is so if it is originating from the atrium then it's likely to be a premature atrial contraction. So we already said it was early, and we've already identified that it's originating from the atrium. If not, then we can move on again to, is the QRS complex thin? So this same question that we used to differentiate the late beat, we can use the early beat as well. After we've analyzed it, there is no form of atrial contraction or movement. So then once again, if it's, yes, the QRS complex is thin and normal looking, then we know it must be junctional and that it can't be ventricular, it can't be atrial because there is no atrial movement so it's a premature junctional beat or in the other hand if it's not normal and the QRX is quite wide QRS sorry is quite wide and fat we can see that it must be a premature ventricular contraction so that's on that side and I believe that really is paints a good picture of your irregular rhythms as well as your one-off rhythms and characterizing them but if you go on the other side to see if it is a regular rhythm uh, first thing I, I put on there is it sinus so is it your typical sinus rhythm that we're seeing if so yes we can move into a question that helps differentiate between two main kinds of sinus rhythms is it Brady so is it slow what is the rate if the rate is bradycardic then logically we have sinus bradycardia with a nice picture in there explaining just how slow it is or, or can be 
Uh, but no, if it's not Brady, then it very well may likely be sinus tachycardia. Now, obviously, I'm not saying they're the only two possibilities, but like I said, this was created halfway towards or to more towards the end as well of this semester, and I didn't want it to be absolutely exploding with different ones. Just a very basic uh, characterization interpretation flow chart that I could use for my own study. So, is it regular? Yes. Is it a sinus rhythm? Yes. Uh, sorry, no. Sorry. So no, it's not a sinus rhythm. So then we move on to, is the QRS normal? And is there any recognizable atrial activity prior to any of those QRS complexes? So now what we're trying to get is, is there atrial activity? And is the ventricles contracting normally? So no, if the ventricles are not contracting normally within that 0 0.12, and you can't see any recognizable atrial activity, we can move into, safely start to think that it might be ventricular tachycardia. But then we can further differentiate this in the sense that whether it is polymorphic or monomorphic ventricular tachycardia. So polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, so is it monomorphic is the question? No. So it must be polymorphic. You can see there it's got the different ectopic focuses causing quite a even more un unorganized um, rhythm. Now I do want to mention here this could be quite confusing because technically a polymorphic ventricular tachycardia is not a regular rhythm. Um, I'm well aware of that and like I said it, it probably visually should be on the other side but in my head and seeing as this is purely designed for me this is probably the one flaw of it um, it is not uh, it is not on that side of an irregular rhythm I have included it as regular purely for in my own head I can already distinguish that that is not a regular rhythm but I wanted to group it with the other form of VT just for ease and, and convenience. So yes, polymorphic VT is on the wrong side, but I wanted to show the, the distinguish between monomorphic and polymorphic VT. So you can also say, yes, is it monomorphic? You have that nice picture of monomorphic ventricular tachycardia, where it's all the same, originating from the same spot. So we go back one step. So no, the QRS is not within normal limits, and there is no atrial activity prior. So then we need to ask ourselves, do P waves resemble saw teeth or normal P wave shapes? So are the P waves a recognizable shape to what we would expect for a P wave? So if not, this is likely to indicate atrial tachycardia where there can still be a number of atrial contractions, but generally the notes say that the P waves don't resemble the regular shape of a P wave. Uh, if they do resemble the usual shape, you can also have the ratios of you know, 1 to 2, 1 to 4 different kinds, but it could be an atrial flutter which is commonly described as, as saw tooth and, and does look like the teeth of a, a power saw um, or just a regular saw as well. And you can see there is a nice picture of what atrial flutter looks like. And I think that's quite a, the best way that was able to distinguish between atrial tachycardia and atrial flutter. So there you have it. Like I said, it's a very, very quick, very easy to follow diagram. It doesn't incorporate all kinds of rhythms because that would just be a ridiculously enormous flow chart. But this is a very basic way that helped me understand the basic concepts around ECG interpretation and some of the logical processes that you use to analyze them. So as I mentioned, polymorphic VT was purely grouped with monomorphic just to get that easy distinguish uh, a while ago when I was struggling with that concept at the very start of the semester. So I'm well aware that it's not a regular rhythm, um, but seeing as, it, as I said this is for my interpretation, I think of that every time I look at it, so I'm aware of that. Um, I hope you enjoyed my explanation of this.